Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is working again on Percy the Peacock. So when I left you last, I had pinned down and placed all of these motifs and they're now stitched down and not going anywhere. The bow's been attached. Um, that little medallion, I had thought it was gonna go up here, but I ended up moving it over to this side. Just thought I needed this to be a little bit more simple than having the um, doily sort of drifting too far away from this. I've since gone through and finished all of the uh, running stitch um, that I was using to make a bit of a highlight around the outer edge. Um, what else have I done? And I have stitched Percy his body. So I end up using stem stitch for his outline, um, some satin stitch for his beak. With his beak, I did a couple stitches for the bottom of the beak going this way and then the rest of the stitches going this way up the beak. I originally did both stitches in the same direction and it just didn't, I don't know, I just couldn't distinguish that it was actually a beak, it just looked like an orange blob. So I ended up going over the top part of his beak with stitches that sat this way. So it's like putting some horizontal and some vertical, sort of. So that helped me define his beak a little bit. You probably can't pick up that detail. Well, you can a little bit there. Then I had a look at the top of his head and I had these little gems that I got from a sequin um, website. So I have put underneath and beside that gem some pistol stitches and some um, bullion stitch. And then um, using those techniques sort of drifted my way down his body. So I did some seed stitch around his neck. I don't know if you can see this. See the seed stitch there? Then I come down onto his chest with some little Vs. And then I used an open daisy stitch down his back. I sort of wanted to, to make it look like it's getting bigger and bigger as you go down the bird's body. Then in under here, if you remember the transfer, where have I put that transfer? Um, I think it's packed away safely. Yeah, I'm not sure where exactly it is. There were some little squiggly lines under the um, tail feather so I thought well let's have a play with that so I did a series of daisy stitches a series of bullion stitches and then I went through and added those little gems just to give us some little detail underneath the big tail of feathers and I really like it I'm, I'm pleased I did that it would have been too simple I guess it's sort of giving the piece a little bit of um, interest in amongst all of the interest. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't make sense. So what I wanna do in this video is work on the wing. Now I grabbed out my um, ribbons and I don't have a lot of ribbon in this beigey color. Now I did this Percy pretty much on the boat and I had to wait until I got home to check out my ribbons. I had to realize it was a bit light on. I probably could have picked up some ribbons when I was in Wellington. Now I've got, this one is a beautiful color for it, but the ribbon is too wide. I really need something more narrow. <clears throat> so I have found this one, but it's very yellow, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not bad. Let me just have another flip through. Maybe there's something I've missed. Oh, I've got so many pinky tones. Oh, hang on, here we go. That's better. That's, that's better. It's a fresher. I could probably even use both now that... There's that one too, it's a bit too cream. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it's a little sister to that one. Okay, very good. I was starting to think I didn't have anything. 
Now, what we might do is I will use both. How am I going to do this? Maybe I make the under feathers, the darker one, and the, the top feathers, the lighter one, sort of two-tone it. I hope it doesn't look too busy. So I'll put a disclaimer in now. I am not a confident ribbon embroiderer. This is probably the fourth time I've picked up ribbon embroidery. Susanna's project, um, Exploring Vintage Sewing Techniques. One of the months coming is ribbon embroidery and I'm really looking forward to it because it'll really make me focus on doing such a piece. So at the moment, this is uncharted territory and I, I don't know how it's going to go because the main thing is I have a very thick... Oh, that went all right. Oh, I've been thinking about this a bit. I have a very thick piece that I'm working on. So I've found a good size needle. I'm going to try and make a, a decent hole. And I'm going to... Just take my time and see what we can do. I just want a little twist in all of these feathers. Now I'm starting at the base. That seems logical to me because I can get those under feathers. Oh, that's going through that fabric really well. Well, that's, that's great. I thought I'd be really pushing to pull the needle with the ribbon through. Oh, well, that's great because <clears throat> getting back to the Susanna project, vintage sewing techniques, I really want to keep in theme of my whole piece, which is working with these pieces of old quilt. Oh, I like that. So knowing that I can actually easily pull that through. Wow, that's really, that's like butter. Okay, lovely. So I'm just going to put some random twisted feathers in. I've got a bit of a guide there, but I'm sort of free handing a little. I don't know if it'll look right, but give it a go. I think the main thing is that they all follow, you know, a similar sort of direction. I'll just bring one up into this gap. I feel like it could do with another one there. Okay. Well, that was painless. I don't know why I've got intrepidation with ribbon embroidery. How fun is that? Okay, so I'm just going to finish off the piece of ribbon. It just goes through like butter. That's that's lovely. Now I'll pick up the next colour. I'm going to lay some more stitches drifting over the top of it. I've kept them nice and loose-ish too. I want the feeling of body on that wing. So then my next thought was at the top of the wing using some beads. So let's start with a feather going through to there. We can get another one in. Whoops. Unthreaded. We can get another another feather there. Just start working 
Oh, that's a bit too twisted. Gives it a nice point, but it's probably a little bit too much. That's better. Then I might just bring the needle up now between some of these up to the top. So we get that transition of colour across the wing. Oh, how fun. I didn't know what I was going to do for the Susanna piece. You know, the classic is flowers. And um, maybe I could consider another bird because they certainly make great feathers, these, this style of embroidery. I've got a few ribbon embroidery books. I should dig them out and see if there's something that catches my eye. There might be an image in there or a pattern that I can use for Susanna's prompt. I've got a quite a grungy theme happening with the colours. So sort of it might limit me a little bit. I don't I don't know. Probably should have done that big feather there. So this little one can lie over it. Let's go right down. Then we might come up to the side of it first. I hope you can see this. I know a few of you have been asking me to have a play with ribbon embroidery. And I haven't had the time or it hasn't really popped up in my pieces. But um, so when I saw Percy as a possibility as a, pro a side project, a holiday project, that's how it sort of came to be, that wing just like, was perfect for it. There we go. Oh, Percy. Gee, I'm liking that. So I'm just going to end that off. It's probably not the way you end it, but anyway, it will hold. The work is not going on to clothing, so it's not like it has to withstand cleaning and things like that so I don't need to be too finicky about it so there we go I oh, love it one feathered bird oh, really like that okay let's pop them away now let's have a look at some beads. What are we going to do up in here? Where's the beads? Here they are. I could even do some layered sequins. What else could we do? I don't want them to be too big, otherwise it'll overpower the wing so that brings me back to these tiny guys I'm going to come out of there they're pretty these are more white oh for goodness sakes come out so I've got three that are all the same size and they're all tones that would work with it they'd actually tie it in quite nicely and I do have three little areas the sequins I think will be too big for it let's have a look I don't know which way to go, to be honest. I could do a few different combinations here. So let's have a play. Let's try sequins first. I broke my Ferrero Rocher container. I like it because my needle, my pin cushion here is lethal. When I made it back in 1987, when I was doing a lot of red work, I made this little sampler. It's got the ABCs and the one, two, three, four, five on it. I didn't put 
a piece of card in the bottom of it. The, the idea of um, using walnut shell in the centre of it didn't come into my brain, didn't even know it existed, which is a great option because it sharpens your needles and pins and gives it a nice, heavy, you know, substance to be in a pin cushion. And I bought myself some and I really, really want to remake a pin cushion with that inside, but I just haven't got to it. So some Ferrero Rochers came into my world. They were consumed and this little container is the perfect size for the pin cushion. So it's been great because every time I pick this nasty little pin cushion up, it bites me because all the pins and needles come out the other end. So I, I really would like to redo it. And when I went on the cruise, I just left it in that container. I popped the lid on it, put a little tie around it, and off I went. Well, in the suitcase, it's cracked the container. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to repurchase some Ferrero Rochers, those chocolates. Empty the container and um, replace it because you can't have a cracked container just not right. I'm going to place a sequin on first. I just want to make sure it's not a good option because it would give us some shimmer. I don't really want to put a bead in the sequin so I might have to don't mind it actually. What if I was to do a line of sequins? And then a bead actually does go into the sequin. And then the bead can continue up into the shoulder or the joint of the wing. I'm misplacing them. I don't mind that wasn't exactly what I had in mind when I sat down, mind you. Let's place another one. So we'd get five on there. And then I'm thinking those. I don't mind it. I guess if I don't like it. I can undo it. I'm going to, I will put a bead on the sequin to hold the sequin in place. I think, I think that'll soften the look of the sequins. Yeah, that'll, that'll be good. It'll just bring that little neutral tone to the center of the sequin. having that little creamy bead in the center. I could do a French knot. But the bead in the sequin is a bit of a favorite. I sort of like that look. So I'm just going to got one on. I'm going to put the next one. The sequin is a bit of a dish shape, these ones. Uh, so I'm trying to make sure that the disc is facing down, no, up. It's concave or convex. Let me think about it. Concave is a cave you go into it. Is that how it worked? I don't know. I think it's concave. Yeah, that's, that looks really good. Now, I don't want it to be appear like a straight line. There's no straight lines on my peacock. Ow! There's a pin going, a needle going into a knuckle and behind. Oh, the injuries. Okay. 
yeah, I like that. I do, I do, I do. I could have worked this section on the boat because I had beads and sequins with me, but I, I couldn't really because I needed the feathers, the, the ribbons to be underneath. Does that make sense? I sort of, you've got to work from the bottom of the wing up to get that layered effect. I'm just wondering if I leave a gap there so that it doesn't look like a line of sequins. Just a little little gap. I can always come back and put that one in. I'm just going to break it up a little and see what that looks like. It's like a, a stroke of paint. Okay. Yep. That looks great. What a fancy peacock this Percy's turning out to be. He's an albino peacock, I decided, because there's not a stitch of purple, blue or green on him. So he's one of those very special albino ones that you see. Well, I've never seen one, but you type them into Google and they are spectacular. They're all ivory and white and, oh. I'm really pleased with this piece. This might be a piece I frame. It's the first time I've really done something like that. You can't do every piece because you'd have a wall full of pieces and you just can't. And it's not cheap to frame. It really is expensive, in my opinion. But I'm thinking Percy here would look great on my wall under glass mm, don't catch that so now I'm just going to stand the beads on their ends because I don't really want to see the hole I don't think I need to go back over this motif too. It's got pearls and things all over it from the manufacturer, but a couple of them are a little bit, uh, a little bit lacking uh, a stitch. Just threading up again. That's going to work a treat. And then once I have this wing sorted, I need to have a think about the railing, what stitches I use there. If you have a look at the original pattern that we've worked from, it looks like they intend you to use stem stitch and then a few short and long stitches to create the shading. Remember there was shading that come in along here? So I'm, I'm sort of thinking I will do that. I could satin stitch the whole railing in is another option. Use my satin stitch up to scratch. I don't know. I'd hate to 
have some dodgy satin stitch in there would be a little disappointing. And then I'd rather make probably the flowers really elaborate too. So the satin stitch might be lost anyway. A satin stitch might overpower the flowers where I want the flowers to be the hero. So I sort of need to have a think about it. The flowers are going to need to be quite delicate too. Otherwise, they'll look too much for the peacock. So I need to have a think about that. I've got my little book from Jennifer. Um, foolproof flower embroidery. So I do need to have a bit of a thumb through that and see if there's something fine. I could always do things like wisteria and things like that, but even that can be quite bulky. You know, those French knots start to build up. I did think of doing something along the lines of cutting out a little circle of a textile, a fabric, and creating a little flower, whether that will be too bulky. Um, I don't know. Is there enough happening in the piece that to do something there too elaborate might be too much? It's a little bit to think about. Hmm. I feel like I've got this wing sorted and I just want to put it down and go looking at flowers now, but I must stay focused for a little bit and just get it done because otherwise I'll head off on another tangent. We'll save that for another video. Maybe at the end of the video we'll have a little look. So I can't help myself. Trying to keep these little beads quite random. Don't want to have the any lines in amongst them, which is not the easiest to do. Don't think I'll bring another colour in. I think this will look quite good. Yeah, and I, I like how it then drifts down onto the sequin. That sort of has helped blend blend the beads and having them all standing on their sides so you can't see the whole, I think is really, really pretty too. I'm getting lots of shimmer. I'm not getting the, the shadow of the whole. It's maintaining the shape of the wing, that curve at the top. I've got to, got to be mindful of that. The pattern had segments, three segments. I'm not going to be able to do that with one coloured bead. But I don't think it'll be a problem. My needle on threading is more of a problem. I might end this off and get another longer thread. Why struggle? And I'm going to use this thread to secure it a little. Don't want the feathers of the ribbon coming undone. So we'll just do a few little knots in there. Can't hurt. Okay, 
Let's have a little look how it's going. Yeah, that's going to work. I just need to make sure I follow that line to get that curve. Otherwise, it won't look right. And I must not go any higher than that bead there. Oh, I love the feathers. Just, that one's a bit loose. That's better. Okay. Let's go. How are we going for time? Time flies when you're having fun. 30 minutes, like, gee, I tell you. A lot of people say, how do you manage to do an hour video? It's easy when you're stitching. You want to get started, an hour just flies and you look at your work sometime, you're like, well, what did I achieve? Especially if you've got a little bit of thinking, contemplating, planning, you know, you sort of, before you know it, an hour's gone by. So I certainly don't find it difficult. And as for the yibby yabba, well, that certainly comes natural. As my mother would have said, she said, you don't have quiet times often, do you? <laughs> nope. It does help my creative process being able to talk it through with you guys too. I know you can't answer me, but sometimes just hearing, hearing the thought out aloud really helps. I don't normally do that, but it has really helped me creatively, I guess. I'm sort of getting out of my head a little bit, making a decision straight away, not just stewing it around in my mind. So it does help me creatively. Well, I, I believe there. that's good, that bead. That's really curved up that shape. I'm going to do the next bead on the curve. Yeah, it's like... I guess if I was just sitting by myself quietly in my own head, I probably wouldn't advance as quick. But being that I'm filming, I sort of I just have to make a decision and just go for it. And sometimes I get a better result because I haven't overanalyzed it. Okay. So a few more little beads. It's a bit boring viewing for you. I guess you could skip to the end if you wish now, because I'm just going to put in probably another 10 beads and the wing will be sorted. But I'm sure you're sitting there stitching with me. Many, many of you told have told me that we all stitch together, which is just lovely because we're all in our own spaces and oh, it'd be so good if we could just all hang out and stitch. I have a friend that has set up um, a small cafe in Brisbane. Well, he's actually purchased it from a lady that wanted to retire. So he's finding his way, he's hired a, a cook and oh, they're having a ball. And I had thought about asking him, would he mind if we met some of you girls and myself, we met at the cafe for coffee one day very soon, just to say hello. I know there's quite a few that are Brisbane ladies or just outside of town. So, I don't know, I'm just tossing around the idea. I'm still yet to see how he goes. Like, I don't want to have you meet at a dodgy cafe. But it might be a venue that we can consider. I know there was a lovely lady. I'm so sorry I've forgotten your name now. It was many, many videos ago. I think you're a Gold Coast girl. And you actually suggested the idea first. And I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we should get together and have a bit of a stitch 
or something. Bring your knee to work and we just sit and yibba yabba. Coffee and cake would be a bit of fun. So I'm tossing around the idea. I just haven't found a venue yet, but when I found out my friend had bought this little cafe and he's starting to post pictures of some of the meals that he's putting together with his new... Well, I thought it was a chef, but he said, no, no, he's just a cook. Um, I thought, oh, they look pretty good. So we'll give him a bit of time to find his feet. Or a couple crazy stitching ladies turn up there and run amok. Okay. I'm closing in on that side. I'm happy with that shape. I've got a bit of a wave happening. The bead's probably a little high, but a bit of squishing might bring him into line. One more, maybe two. Let's see where this one, maybe not. I know beading seems tedious, but it's a really rewarding. Just brings that glam to your piece. So if you haven't tried it, have a little go, take your time. It's part of the slow stitch world as far as I'm concerned because it it's, takes time. Do I need another line of beads coming across the top there, or is that enough? Oh, I think I need maybe a couple more, just to help that shape a little bit. The sequin feels like it's sticking out a little bit too far by itself. Maybe I can get the bead to stand up like so. That's better. And then I'll need another one. Oh, gosh, to think this was a doily design. Oh, I wish my mum was still around to see what we did with the peacock. Because remember it was in her... Um, little sewing basket so I'm not sure if it was something she had as a young girl and was considering it and it's just been rattling around or she picked it up at grandma's house when we cleaned out her sewing room and it just went into that little basket I think the little basket was at grandma's so it's possible that it got popped in there as just a pretty design because he is. He's a bit cute. But it may have been in there because mum had it as a young person. I, I sort of don't remember it myself. It might be from my era. I'm really not sure. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it was in her sewing room and she picked it up, popped it into the basket when the bar, sewing basket turned up at, um, the farm after having cleaned out grandma's sewing room. I, I just don't know. But it would have been a very simple, you know, doily embroidery. That's what we were using them for in the day. This is certainly next level stuff that hasn't um, embroidery evolved. Just going to now just do some random stitches through some of the earlier beads just to really tighten them down. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Those extra three beads I think have made the difference to that edge of the wing. It's made the sequins sit under like they're within the wing, not sticking out of the wing. Does that make sense? Probably not. 
let's finish that off nice and secure just do a third knot oh it's been waiting to do that wing if i had have had the ribbon with me on that cruise that wing would have been done oh i love it i love it oh, i love the texture of that ribbon how fun is that here we go guys bring it up to the camera Percy, Percy. Aren't you a fancy boy? I love how this is a softer cream with the darker tones coming in from the crocheted pieces which pick up and match the background. But then Percy is this cream again but slightly different again. He's sort of in his own space. The trick will be these flowers. I think the flowers might make or break this piece to be honest. How are we going for time? Can we have a flip through a book? Yes, we can. Here we go. Righto, Percy. What flowers do we do? There he is. Oh, hello. So I took him on the cruise and I didn't realise I need to. Okay. See those little feathery things down there? That's what I had drawn in there. So there's, see, they would have done a stem stitch there because there's even some little strokes over here. Those there. Hmm. I think I will do stem stitch, you know. What colour? Hmm, I don't know. Let's have a look at the flowers. Maybe that will narrow down. Oh, look at that. It definitely needs to be vine-like. I love those, but they might be too big. I don't have variegated cotton colour. That's what makes that look so good. Um... So I've got to sort of think about my piece is very neutral. Look at the flower in in there. Is that is that another picture of that? Sorry guys. Is it that that one? No. I don't know. That's a tiny little flower. Even that vine there that there that's a pretty little vine i could just do a foliage looking piece oh that's not very exciting that is it coming up is crazy quilting in susanna's prompts vintage sewing techniques so that's that's pretty cool and then embroider over the top of it that's going to be really fun that prompt that's going to be a rabbit hole again stay focused for in looking at vine like plants look at those Oh, I'd love to bring green in, but I can't. I've got to stay true to our tones. It's neutral. It's all about neutral. See, look at that. Ooh. Now it's catching my eye there. Is the way that the stem is done. How beautiful is that? How did she do that stitch? Can't see it anywhere. Gee, I think she's talking. 
twisted chain stitch. Mm, the stem is a twisted chain, chain stitch. Go to page 84. Oh, I've never done a twisted chain stitch. Is it too thick for what we want? 84. Thorn stitch, twisted chain stitch. Can you guys see that? Yep. Bring the needle to the surface of the work. A. Loop the thread to the right and insert into B. So you loop it around and down you go again. With the thread under the needle, emerge at C. Okay, so that's that's daisy stitch but not joined. Okay. Emerge at C under A. Yep, that makes sense. Loop the thread to the left and insert into D. Okay, so then you scoot over to the side with the thread under the needle and merge at E. So then you do another loop and do it again. What a pretty stitch. I think I'd want to practice that elsewhere and then see if it looks fine enough it might be too bulky because when you look at this piece here they've just done a little a little stem stitch I would say would have been put onto that doily a few little lazy daisies and then those flowers I don't want to do those flowers that's too simple we can do we can do better than that twisted chain stitch hmm. we might have to have a think about that <clears throat> uneven twisted chain stitch like who would have thought look at that it's so pretty okay so that's yeah i think it'll be too much because yeah i, I just i don't know i might have to do a simple stem stitch and then let the flowers be the hero. Otherwise, the stem is, I guess the stem could be everything and no flowers. That's another option I need to think about. Let's go back to the pretty pictures and see what else catches the eye here. That is a very pretty stitch here. I don't know if I can get it weavy enough too. Okay, embroidery stitches for flowers. They're all very bulky. Could do some little grub roses through it using bullion stitch, but I think that'll be too dense. I think the trick will be too to use only one or two threads to try and make it look delicate and it's in the background. It can't be real thick, otherwise it's gonna overpower the piece. I think something else I need to consider. It has to be very fine. Even they're cute. That's like a little blanket stitch. Oh, so many options. What are we going to do? To even little bullion stitches like that with a French knot inside them is quite an effective little bud-like, rose-like without being too much they're pretty hmm this book if you guys don't have this book i'd highly recommend you do because there is just so much in here because there's little morsels she's a very clever girl this jennifer she has layered things she's created oh look at look at that I've seen this pop up around the place where they do like a, a blanket weave for the stem of the flower. Can you even see this? Let me just zoom in a little bit more. So they do like a blanket weave and then the petals come out from it. Now I'll go back out. 
I think you're thinking, geez, Corinne, you're flipping us everywhere. Oh, gosh, the more you look. Like, look. Oh. I don't know. I'm rather partial to bullion stitches. I do enjoy doing them. Look how fine you can get your work with one thread. Look at that. That's pretty. That's one, one thread. I think I need to do one thread to get that fine look. Not that I'm going to do it now, but we'll just, we'll just have a little, little look. I need some thread. I need cream thread. Do I not have some here? Surely I have cream thread. It might be still sitting by my chair. That's the thread I was using with the Roxy. It's sort of a Nelly, a different cream again. Um, I could probably do a chocolate thread. I wonder if there's something in the Sue Spargo threads that I bought in New Zealand. Hang on one second, guys. How are we going for time? Oh, we got time. We've got nine minutes. <clears throat> okay. These are Sue Spargo's threads. Maybe that's a pretty good tone. How fine will this work up? It's pretty much very similar to a crocheting cotton. Wonderful. Okay, so I've got this brand in amongst my crocheting, uh, in amongst my threads already. Wonderful. So Sue's obviously selected a range of threads and created. I, I think this will be too thick. Yeah, it's too thick, guys. I think it needs to be quite fine. Uh, further investigation needed. And I think I need to get down. So what's this, an eight? What size? A five. Okay. I think I actually need to go to stranded cottons. Let me grab them. That's where my cream threads are. This was my pack I took on my cruise. I think I need to use a stranded cotton and break it down. To one thread. Oh, don't go anywhere. And I'm going to have to try and work out color scheme. No, see that's what I used on the body of the bird that's no good it's tricky cream on cream on cream it's getting enough of a a definition a difference see that was in the bird itself and then there's the railing what color do we make the railing sort of like that color for the railing anyway decisions to be made isn't it? Do I have a brown? If we made the stem that, the plant that, then the petals on the plant could be in those tones. Hmm, decisions. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I need to think about this a little bit. I need to work out the railing, I think, 
the color of it does it become quite a strong no it can't be I don't think it's going to interfere with the bird I think the railing needs to be quite gentle I think I can get a little bit crazy with this as the stem of the branch because I can't bring green in so I think we'll go more like a stick plant and if I just use the one thread it'll be fine and then I can have a think about the flowers but I need to ponder I need to ponder can I get away with this green this gray I probably could you know it's a greeny gray Hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to stop now because it'll end up dragging into another hour. I'm going to stop the video, have a little think about it, lay some threads out, have a look at them, walk away, come back, walk away, because I think, I think this is going to be the critical element to the finished piece. No pressure. Yeah, okay. All right, guys, I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you in the next video. And the next video will be finishing off our dear Percy. All right, guys, look after yourselves. See you soon. Bye for now.